learners today we are starting with a new chapter investment planning when i'm talking about investment tell me one thing when an investor invests his money somewhere what does he think pehli cheez kya aati hai dimag mein returns no he will think of the risk ki agar main paisa kahin pe invest karti hu to usme kitna risk ho sakta hai कौन कौन से टाइप के रिस्क हो सकते हैं सो लेट अस सी व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट रिस्क द फर्स्ट वन इज इंटरेस्ट रिस्क इट सेज बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्लक्चुएशन ऑफ इंटरेस्ट यू मे फेस अ लॉस दैट रिस्क विल टेक एन एग्जांपल देयर आर टू इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एफडी एंड बॉन्ड्स फॉर एग्जांपल द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इन एफडी इज 8% वेयर एज द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑफ बॉन्ड्स इज 6% एज एन इन्वेस्टर व्हाट विल यू चूज 8% या 6% Obviously 8% क्यों क्योंकि वो ज्यादा है ठीक है सो द हायर द रेट ऑफ रिटर्न द इन्वेस्टर विल इन्वेस्ट इज मनी दे एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दिस डिमांड फॉर एफ डी गोज ऑन इंक्रीजिंग एंड ड्यू टू इंक्रीज इन डिमांड ऑफ एफ डी द प्राइस ऑफ बॉन्ड गोज ऑन रिड्यूसिंग ओके सो दिस कैन बी अ रिस्क एंड दिस रिस्क इज नोन एज इंटरेस्ट रिस्क द नेक्स्ट वन इज मार्केट रिस्क अगेन दिस रिस्क इज अनकंट्रोलेबल you cannot completely eliminate this risk but yes you can hedge against this hedge yani protect okay hedge mane protect you can protect uh, your loss protect from loss but you cannot uh, completely eliminate it the best example corona virus ka ye jo pandemic hai kisi ko pata nahi tha kya hone wala and suddenly this happened and because of this the market you can see the market is going down yeah so this was an example of market risk any natural disaster or any this pandemic or any recessions okay the next one is credit risk credit risk says when i give a credit for example uh, if there is a businessman mr a he gives credit to his customers when they buy product from mr a he gives uh, the goods on credit there is a risk credit risk ki aage chalkar हो सकता है वो कस्टमर इनको पे ना कर पाए ओके द मनी विच द कस्टमर हैव बोरोड फ्रॉम मिस्टर ए कैन नॉट ही मे बिकॉज ऑफ सम रीजन ही मे नॉट बी एबल टू पे दैट देन दैट रिस्क इज क्रेडिट रिस्क ओके द नेक्स्ट वन इज करेंसी रिस्क वेन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट करेंसी यो आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्सचेंज रेट द फ्लक्चुएशन इन एक्सचेंज रेट one can also face loss due to fluctuation in exchange rate for example 1 dollar aaj uh, 70 rupees hai 80 rupees hoga theek hai to uska agar risk ek hai ki aage chalkar ho sakta hai dollar 90 rupees ho jaye ya ho sakta hai 40 rupees ho jaye this fluctuation okay causes a uh, can cause a loss so that risk is currency risk the next one is liquidity risk again liquidity matlab kya to convert your assets into cash that is liquidity okay for example i own a house of rupees 1 crore and i need a uh, in short run i need some cash so i have to sold it out, sell it out so when i am selling it ho sakta hai uska demand na ho koi 1 crore mein wo cheez nahi khareed rahe to mujhe wo 1 crore ka ghar ho sakta hai 80 lakhs mein bechna pade and when i am selling that One crore wala property at rupees eighty lakh, then that twenty lakh will be my loss. So that loss can be a risk to me, and that risk is known as liquidity risk. कि मैं asset को cash में convert करते वक्त मुझे अगर loss होता है, that loss is known as liquidity risk. The next one is legal risk. This says in your business or uh, if one doesn't follow any uh, law or any regulation. so uh, they have a legal risk on them for example i am a person who is a manufacturer and in my company i make children like the small children of 10 years 11 years to work so that is a legal risk on me ki bhai aage chalkar agar aisa hota hai ki kisi ko pata chala to wo child labor ke naam pe mere pe case thok sakte hain okay so that is a legal risk so these are the few risk which an investment uh, which an investor have to face while investing his money which he may face while investing his money now let us see the risk profile of an investor 
This profile indicates how much risk does an investor wants to take. Okay, the first type is low risk or defensive investors. They are the one who don't want to take any kind of risk. Okay, where risk is zero, they are the one who want to invest their money somewhere where they will get a fixed return. For example, bank account. For example, government bonds. ठीक है जहां पर रिटर्न मिलने ही वाला है रिस्क एकदम जीरो है दे आर बेसिकली ऑफ ओल्ड एज ग्रुप द इन्वेस्टर्स आर बेसिकली ऑफ ओल्ड एज ग्रुप पूरा जिंदगी कमाया अभी पेंशन के टाइम पे रिस्क नहीं लेने का ठीक है द नेक्स्ट वन इज लो मिड रिस्क और कंजर्वेटिव इन्वेस्टर दिस इन्वेस्टर आर वेरी कंजर्वेटिव एकदम लिमिटेड रिस्क लेना है ठीक है रिस्क जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा क्या है लिमिटेड है वाई दे आर द वन टू इन्वेस्ट इन गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स जस्ट एन एग्जाम्पल और मनी मार्केट सिक्योरिटीज एफ टी और फिक्स इनकम ऐसा जहां पर वो लोग रिस्क तो लेना चाहते हैं बट बहुत ज्यादा कम ठीक है द नेक्स्ट वन इज मिड रिस्क और मॉडरेट इन्वेस्टर दे आर दन हु डोंट इवन लाइक ना इधर के ना उधर के ऐसा नहीं कि रिस्क बिल्कुल नहीं लेना है और ऐसा भी नहीं है कि रिस्क बहुत ज्यादा लेना है दे आर दन हु इन्वेस्ट इन इक्विटी बॉन्ड्स कैश For example, they invest uh, 30% in equity, 35% in bonds, okay, and then 25% in cash. They are the one who split their uh, investments in such a way, जहाँ पे risk भी हो, equity ले लिया तो risk आ गया, bonds आ गया, cash आ गया, तो जहाँ पे risk एकदम कम हो गया. So they are the moderate one. The next one is mid high risk or the growth investor. They are the one who want to invest more in equity. Why? रिस्क ज्यादा रहेगा तो रिटर्न ज्यादा रहेगा ये सोच के वो लोग रिस्क ज्यादा लेने के लिए जाते हैं ठीक है मिड हाई रिस्क अगेन ज्यादा मतलब बहुत ज्यादा नहीं थोड़ा फॉर एग्जाम्पल दे विल इन्वेस्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट इन इक्विटी थर्टी परसेंट इन बॉन्ड्स ट्वेंटी परसेंट इन कैश और कमोडिटी ओके दे आर दन जिनको रिस्क लेना है ज्यादा बट साथ में बाकी चीजों में भी इन्वेस्ट करना है एंड द लास्ट वन इज हाई रिस्क और अग्रेसिव इन्वेस्टर These investors are very aggressive. They don't invest in all these uh, bonds or FD or uh, you know cash, commodity, all this. They invest their money in equity. मतलब पूरा सौ परसेंट equity में डाल दिया. अलग-अलग companies के equities खरीद दिए. Why? They are the aggressive investors. They think कि जितना ज़्यादा risk वो लोग लेंगे, उतना ज़्यादा return आएगा. And they are ready to take that much risk. If it goes well, then they will earn a good profit. But if it doesn't go well, then they are the one who will face the loss. But as I said, they are so aggressive that they will again invest in uh, equities only. ठीक है कि अगर loss हुआ तो loss bear करेंगे. फिर से जब market में enter करेंगे equities में ही invest करेंगे. ठीक है वो लोग high risk लेना चाहते हैं. इसीलिए ऐसा होता है. Okay, so this was the uh, this were the risk profile of investors. So now let us see asset allocation life cycle model. This model tells us about how to allocate the assets in such a way so that your objectives are fulfilled by getting more returns, a good amount of returns. The first step is to setting goals. Okay, or I can say setting your financial planning objectives. First of all, you have to set an objective. Why? Because of this objective, everything will be followed so that you can achieve this objective. Okay, for example, a person wants to buy a house for uh, two three crores in five years, so he will plan all this to do that. Okay, or else if a person wants a certain amount as his pension in his reti- after his retirement, so he will do all this thing. The second step is set your strategic allocation. This says that allocation which you will do of your assets should be strategized. Okay, you have to make different strategy and then pick up one. For example, I pick up कि मुझे 50% equity में डालना है, 20% I want to invest in bonds and 30% in commodities. Okay, so this is the strategy which I choose. Okay, so the next will be add assets to build up your portfolio. Again, when I say my portfolio is strong, it means in my portfolio I have such assets which are of low risk. अगर रिस्क कम है तो मेरे असेट्स ज्यादा कीमती या मैं बोलूँ ज्यादा मायने रखेंगे एंड दैट विल मेक माय पोर्टफोलियो मोर स्ट्रॉन्ग 
okay again my portfolio is strong that means i'll get more in return that's why i want to make my portfolio strong yeah so after making my portfolio strong uh, i'll move to the next step that is monitor your asset allocations uh, regularly the asset which you have allocated ki bhai 50% equity 20% bonds 30% commodity isme invest to kar liya invest karke bhulna nahi hai you have to monitor it regularly okay the next step is rebalance of portfolio this point says in case okay in case uh, the portfolio portion jitna maine invest kiya 50% i have uh, invested in equity theek hai so equity ka jo portion hai that have outperformed if i compare to commodities so what i'll do i'll rebalance my portfolio how will i rebalance my portfolio i'll invest 60% of my money in equity okay 20% i'll invest in bonds 20% i'll invest in commodity what i did i rebalanced my portfolio why so that i can get more returns and achieve my objective the last one is consider lifestyle again guys this is the most important thing why because you have to consider your lifestyle tumhare lifestyle pe depend karta hai ki tum kitna risk tolerate kar sakte ho risk capacity kitni hai tumhari okay so if your lifestyle is good and you are uh, you know you are able to take that much risk so you can take risk and obviously the higher the risk the higher will be the return the lower the risk you take the lower will be the return so you have to consider your lifestyle before taking any risk okay so this is the basic uh, life cycle model of asset allocation now let us see asset allocation strategy so this is a strategy where assets are being allocated in such a way so that the investor can get maximum benefit maximum returns from his assets there are four ways to do it the first one is using a traditional based approach again this approach what it does it has been divided the investors in three categories the adventurous moderate and conservative adventurous are the one who want to take high risk so they will invest 80% of their money in equity 20% they will invest in bonds whereas the moderate are the one who will invest 50% in equity 45% in bonds and 5% they will keep it as cash whereas when i'm talking about conservative they are the one who want to take a low risk ekdam kam risk le so they will invest 20% in equity 60% in bonds and rest 20% they will keep it as cash okay this was the traditional based approach the next one is asset allocation by age this says there is a rule 100 minus age okay 100 minus age karne ka jo bhi aapka age uh, percent aayega utna aap equity mein dalo for example mr a mr a is a boy of 25 years old okay he will invest 25% of his money in bonds and the rest 75% he will invest in equities okay 100 minus his age 100 minus 25 is 75 so 75% he will invest in equity whereas when i'm talking about mr x suppose he is of 60 years so 60% of the money he will invest in bonds the rest 40% he will invest in equities why jaise jaise age hota jata hai waise waise risk tolerance level kya hota jata hai kam hota jata hai theek hai the next one is asset allocation by time asset allocation by time says ki this market is not fixed okay it doesn't stop or it is not fixed ki ha abhi change nahi hoga it keeps on changing so the assets which you allocate should be monitored properly and it should be rebalanced it should be rebalanced why ki agar kuch changes aaya agar market mein equities niche ja rahe to fir main wahan se paisa disinvest kar dun okay so your asset allocation should also be done by time the next one is selecting investment by style type sector and geographical diversification again i'll explain it in uh, with a small example the equities okay so equities are of two types value shares and growth shares when i'm talking about value shares they are the one whose dividend is high theek hai inka dividend bahut zyada high hota hai lekin growth of the share is low okay 
the in dividend gets on increasing day by day but their growth is very low whereas when i'm talking about growth shares what happens is the dividend is low dividend zyada nahi milta hai shareholders ko but jo share ka growth hai share ka jo value hai wo jo hai wo zyada badhta hai growth zyada hota hai okay in value shares dividend is less growth is more in growth shares dividend is less growth is more hope you all understood all this so here we will end this chapter and our second module is done here thank you everyone